hello there. On the past video, we finally interacted with the database. We are no longer using a mock variable and we are talking to Ecto and querying data. Here, we're grabbing all the products and then on the product details page, we're grabbing the product by slug. This is amazing. But if you remember the folder structure video, I said on that video, this, go back to the lib folder, we have a shop and shop web folders. And why is that? Because in theory, we should isolate the business domain, the business logic from the UI layer, from the web layer. And what we're doing here is pretty much violating that principle. We're querying the database directly inside the controller. And the controller is part of the web folder, meaning that it's responsible for just showing the data, like grabbing the data from somewhere. We should not be concerned on how, we should just grab the data and then display on the front end, display on the views. The controller is part of the web folder. So the implementation details shouldn't be inside the web folder. And this is wrong, pretty much. I mean, not wrong, but not recommended. Here, like, it's very easy to mess this up and then to have controllers with 10,000 lines of code where you're doing multiple complex queries inside it. It's not a good idea. So in this video, I want to introduce the concept of contexts. And a context is just a module. It's an Elixir module where instead of me going here on the controller and talking to the database, I want to talk to this module. This way I am going to hide the database complexity away from the controller. And how do we do that? We're going to go to the folder, uh, the shop folder. I'm going to create a new folder. I mean, not a folder, a new file. This file is going to be named products in plural. Now, in theory, you can name your module whatever you want, your context, whatever you want. But on the documentation, they say that naming things is hard. And if you have no idea what to name your context, then just grab your schema name and make it plural. Okay, so for simplicity purposes, I'm going to call this uh, products. But imagine that we're working on an e-commerce. You could name this uh, catalog, for example. Uh, if you have a users a schema, you could create an accounts context instead of users in plural, but that's up to you. And for this video, I'm just going to stick to the plural form, which is way easier. So I have a products context. This is simply a module, def module shop dot products. And another convention that we do on Phoenix is we try to embed the schema inside the context. So instead of having shop.product, I'm going to have shop.products, which is our context, dot product. And then I'm going to move this to a separate folder. So now I'm going to create a new folder, which is products, plural. And then I'm going to move my schema inside it. I'm going to paste this here. Now we have shop.products.product. Nice, but we renamed our schema and we were using it on a couple of places. So we have to rename it. So we were using it inside this script file. Now I need to type alias shop dot and then alias shop dot products dot product. Nice. And then also on our controller. Controller. We were using shop.product. Now it's shop.products.product. Okay. So we fixed that. Let me close this. I am going to close the schema. I'm just going to have the controller now. And how do we encapsulate this logic inside the context? Well, you can name the functions whatever you want. But for example, let's take this one. If you had to encapsulate a function, uh, this logic inside the function, 
what how would you name it i think i would just name it a uh, list products or list all products so let's do that i'm gonna go back to the context i'm gonna create a function def list products and then i don't have any parameters i'm just gonna do a single line and then here i'm gonna do repo.all and i am missing a couple of aliases so let me clean up the product controller once and for all i'm gonna remove this we're going to refactor this product's variable so i'm gonna type refactor later and then i'm gonna do the same here i'm gonna do refactor later nice we're gonna go back to our context we're gonna run this aliases and we're not you doing any complex query so for now i think we don't need ecto.query so i'm just gonna leave it so we have list products if i go back to my controller how do i refactor it i don't want to talk to the database i want to talk to the context so to refactor it's going to be very hard we're going to type actually let me run an alias first alias uh, shop dot products plural and here i'm just gonna type products is equal to products dot list products very simple separation of concerns right and what about this one how would you name this function i think i'm gonna name it def find product by slug and we need a slug as a parameter to do here i want to get the product by the slug and yeah i think that's enough so let me go back to the controller let me remove this comment and instead of calling the repo directly i am simply typing products dot find product by slug i have the slug nice and i think i'm just gonna pass like a, a guard here just to make sure i'm getting a string so when is binary slug i am severely addicted to pattern matching and guards so yeah whenever possible i like passing a guard just for safety this should be able to work if i go back to google chrome refresh oh yeah of course i turned off my server let me run that again dev products what am i missing uh is undefined cannot struct oh yeah right because we moved the product schema from another module we were also using this on our product component on the front end so if i go back to the front end shop web controllers we have where's my product html there you go now the alias is wrong i'm gonna say shop products plural dot product okay let me close this now this should work let me refresh actually close this open a new tab um oh yeah i need to run iex again okay in theory it's working if i go back now i have all my products if i click here ID3, name Overwatch 2, and there we go. Very cool. This is how you work with contexts. And as you can see, we call them contexts, but it's just a module. It's just a module that encapsulates the logic away from the controller. So this way, the controller doesn't know the implementation details of this, okay? So very simple, very easy in my opinion. Now let's create a couple extra functions just to have some fun with Ecto. Let's say that I want to delete the product. So I'm going to say def uh, delete product. And then I'm going to say delete product uh, by ID, for example. So I'm going to grab an ID. And actually, this is not going to work. First, I need to query the product. And then after I have the product, I can delete it. So actually, this is a good opportunity to create another function 
code def find product not by slug I want to find product by ID so here I'm expecting an ID when is binary actually the ID could be a number as well so for now I'm just gonna remove this so when I have the ID I want to grab REPL dot get product by the ID okay so now on the delete product by ID for example uh, actually I'm just gonna say delete product I don't know why I need the ID I'm gonna say delete product I'm expecting a product this product needs to be the product struct so I'm gonna say product which is equal to product struct okay I'm gonna run a REPL dot delete product there you go so if I go back I want to run recompile so let's try a couple of these functions I'm gonna say product is equal to uh, shop dot products plural and we can even alias this as well so I'm gonna go back to IEX and then I want to alias this just shop dot products plural so let me cancel this start a new IEX now I can simply type products plural so I'm gonna create a variable products plural dot and the function that we created is find product by ID and then I'm gonna type find product by ID I want to find by the ID of 3 okay we found overwatch this is working and now I want to delete overwatch so instead I want to run now products plural dot delete product and I want to delete the product variable that we created and we got an OK back meaning that this should work if I run the list products I should have only one uh, item on the list so products plural dot list products we have one item very cool and to finish this video I am also going to create another one to create a product and yeah I think this suggestion looks good I'm gonna create a product as you remember from our chain set video we're expecting the product uh, struct as the first argument the second one is a map just a random map with all the attributes and then we're going to run insert nice so if I recompile I want to create a different game now so I'm just gonna say products plural dot it's create product this function is expecting a map just a regular map and then the mandatory fields are name and console let me see what game do I want to play now I think I, I already used Skyrim as an example right I'm a very boring person I just play the same games I'm just gonna say Hearthstone another very good game by Blizzard Hearthstone did I type this right Hearth stone that's a very hard name by the way for non-english speakers hearth stone this game is from the console now I don't have a mobile console because hearthstone is available on mobile so for now I'm just gonna say PC we got an okay back so if I run products plural dot list products we now have Diablo 4 and hearthstone if I refresh our front end we have Diablo 4 this works hearthstone with ID of 5 and name hearthstone very cool so that's it for today the context is just a module with a bunch of functions and to be honest elixir is just modules and functions so if you learn that you're good to go so that's it see you next time